Today's video is an update on some of the projects I've been working on. Hi everyone, I'm Hales and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a quick update of different things that I've been working on, mainly this week actually, in the weekend. Um, I'm still a little bit nasally from the tail end of a cold so just bear with me and hopefully everything will be germ free soon because I'm sick of it by now. I have made a few, th I've made something and I've altered something and I never do alterations because who likes to do alterations? Normally once I've made something that's it, I'm done and dusted and if I don't like it I can't really find the enthusiasm to then do something about it. But I have this skirt which is the Victoria Midi skirt which was a free sewing pattern through I think it was Sew Magazine, it was on their website. I will pop the picture up on the screen so you can see. It was in my, I'm just trying to think, August makes maybe? It was in one of my makes videos, possibly August. I had a meter of a Lady McElroy fabric. It was a cotton lawn fabric and I got it quite cheap, I think because it was near the end of the bolt. So it was only cost me £7.50 and normally it's double that. So I bought it, tried the midi, so it was a gathered skirt, just purely a rectangle of fabric, gathered with a waistband with a button up front and I lined it, that was extra, and it also has patch pockets. When I made it, I made it too big. The waistline, the waist, I don't know, I just, I made it way too big, it kept falling down and as a consequence it sat lower down on me and it was too, I'd measured it, it was way too long on me as well so it just felt swamped and with it being a gathered skirt and with quite a thick lining as well, it just like, I felt like it just ballooned out my hips, it drowned me and it was just sagging and it just felt horrible so it's been sat in my wardrobe hanging up and I haven't done anything about it. But now it's kicking into autumn time and I have put on a few pounds so some of my clothes aren't that comfortable for work. So I thought what can I do? I know I'm going to try and see if I can alter the skirt. So I will change angles of the camera so you can see. I'm still wearing my whole outfit what I wore to work today so that you can see how I've paired it up and I'll run through quickly what I've done to it to make it a bit more wearable. Please excuse the lighting, it is dark and I'm not a photographer so just bear with me while I keep saying that a lot but there we go. So this is just um, an H&M basic cardigan with a boat neck tee, that shop bought, that's Marks and Spencers I think, just a cotton tee. Um, but I have paired it up with this skirt here. Now what I've done is I've actually made it elastic. So where it had a waistband which was too big I cut that off and I think I cut some more off as well just because it was way too long. So if I step back you can see that it's just below my knee so it's a nice midi length whereas before it was just way too, it was just far too long. I'll step back a bit and then you can see like the full length of it. I've also, so I've reduced it down as well because I cut the button placket off so I then had to cut the strip which had the button holes on on the other side as well so there isn't as much fabric going all the way around and then I basically sewed them together and then put a casing in and put a, a thick elastic in. It is a little bit loose so it could be could do with the elastic being a little bit tighter. Now because I've shortened it the pockets are here, the pockets are really high up so I may unpick but I think that will just leave like pinprick holes where it is so I'm not sure because they do kind of probably hard to see on this but they do kind of stick out a little bit but because it's sort of a camouflagey fabric I have just left it so I'll show you just um gather there with the elastic at the back now the front bit I will just show you I will just move the camera down so this here can you see so this has the button placket down here this was actually the waistband I cut the waistband off and I have sewn it down the middle. I cut the section off which had the buttonhole in because it was longer or wider than what the length is on this skirt. So I was able to cut a bit off either end. And then I have sewn a fake, let me just tilt a bit more. So it's here. So there was top stitching anyway from the waistband 
and um, I have then just top stitched again on either side and I have sewn buttons down so you can't open it there is no buttonhole it is just purely for decoration because obviously I can just pull the skirt on and off now I wasn't sure about the skirt but actually as you can see this is how I've worn it at work today it's comfortable to move in I think it kind of goes okay with the grey cardigan it obviously would look a lot look a lot nicer if I had like a mustard top or one of the blues pick one of the blues out perhaps to make it um, match in with the skirt a bit more I won't show you well so my rather attractive flat shoes they're a bit like old people's shoes but they're a cushion sole and I do a lot of walking around at work and I'm on my feet all morning so it's pure comfort level so the shoes don't necessarily tie in with the outfit second update in case anyone's wondering what this is here it's McCall's 6884 and I made this one here and when I pulled it down at the front I, I tightened it it's in a previous vlog where I'm really lurgied up I've, I've made it tighter at the front so it wasn't gaping open but by pulling it down it meant that the front sat lower down at the front and a lot of people did comment and say that it was an asymmetric, made it look like it had an asymmetric hem and it's sort of on trend right now but I felt because I knew it wasn't intentional that it just didn't look right so I got my chalk hem marker out and even marked um, an even hem and I have chopped it and done a narrow hem on that so that is sitting there and I also tightened it was quite loose on the arms so and like because I opted to do a three-eighths of an inch seam purely because I wasn't trying how tight it was going to be on the arms but I felt it was a little bit loose so I ran it through my machine at a five-eighths of an inch just to tighten it up and bring it in a little more the neckline is still stretched out I can't do anything about it because obviously once something is stretched it's stretched but I just wanted to finish off the hem because I felt it's just sitting there taunting me so as I was doing the skirt I thought I'd get that done it's like the week of doing bits and pieces and catching up on stuff anyone observant will see the papers tissue paper behind me which is Butterix double six two one and I cut the pieces out last night uh, for this option here I haven't uh, I'm gonna iron the pieces I have started to do that I think it's quite good practice I didn't bother for a few years I just thought oh you know what I can't be able to iron my pattern pieces but since I started doing it it makes cutting out so much easier I don't use rotary cutter because I don't have rotary cutter or a big board so I am still a very much a scissor person I know that it's probably a lot easier especially if you've got knit fabric to do it the rotary cutter I just haven't got around to getting organized and getting one so that is on my table and that is to make it possibly out of this which I've shown in a previous video We'll see though because it is one sided and where the wrap goes you're gonna see the back so I'm not entirely sure but I thought I would just take it out of the packet and just try and get it cut but I haven't cut to size I've literally just cut the largest size and then I need to like measure out and just see but I'm hoping it will go together fairly quick but I just don't want to stretch out the neckband. I have two more things to show you this one is something I bought well I bought bits and pieces on my festival of fabric haul which I'll link in the cards up above I got some bits and pieces I bought some wreaths I got three rings for five pounds and I've used two of them to make an autumn wreath and I made it out of felt so as you can see I'll try and block my face out so it focuses on the actual item so mainly um, it was done with the glue gun but now which one one of these I think that one that flower was made of the glue gun but this one because I burnt myself on the glue gun I literally just glued my thumb and it blistered up really bad so I was a bit scared about using it so then this one I made purely through sewing the felt together um, to create the same effect and this one here was glue gun and then I just sewed the button on that has gone a bit skew with so mainly so I sewed this one here and I made the fabric pumpkin so we have this one little one down the end there and this one here if I'm not looking at cameras because I'm looking at the viewfinder to know where I'm pointing to so this one here but I was quite pleased with that 
as a first attempt, I mean, in the UK, autumn wreaths or fall wreaths are not really a thing, but I thought I would make one for our dining room. I just need my husband to put a nail up. And then when it's winter time, I th or Christmas time, I thought I can then make a Christmas one and then do a spring one and an Easter one and a summer one because we don't have any decoration on that wall at all. We used to have two, there were two hooks because the previous owners had two mirrors or something hanging up and it never looked right because I really only wanted one, one picture or one hook and then me and my husband can never agree on at what we actually like in terms of pictures or decorations. So we've had a white blank wall for quite a few years now but I thought if I can get the nail hang up, that can be a decoration for that wall. If I then film at my dining room, depends how high up it is, I might have that in the background and it just jazzes up the wall a bit more and I thought it was quite nice and seasonal and like it will last and I can just hide, cover it up and hide it away somewhere and then just bring it out every autumn. So I was quite pleased with myself for doing that. I literally just watched a few um, YouTube tutorials on that and stalked a few people on Instagram for some ideas and I made that. This last thing is that anyone who's been following me for a while will know that I was making some Shaw Trooper trousers for my husband. He does Star Wars cosplay as part of the UK garrison and the trousers I bought him, or not bought him, the trousers I made him before, I'm just trying to get this hook in, um, had shrunk they were, and the specification had changed on how they had to be sewn and where the top stitching needed to be to because they have to be sort of screen accurate even though the time he wears all the armor and the full costume you can't see the details of the stitching yeah he has to submit photos there's a whole process there's like rules there's specification on how the trousers need to be made so they're not fully finished, but I just wanted to show you that I didn't give up, and here they are. So we have a zip, there's a zip fly in there, and there is a um, hook, and I did a sewn-on popper. I put a metal zip in. Now, oh yeah, I do have one more thing to show you. This has just reminded me, talking of trousers. Um, yeah, it's really strange because I haven't actually made trousers for myself, or well, not with, um, a zip or anything like that. I always thought that was too much hassle, but I followed the tutorial by Professor Pincushion and I flipped it. So I did the zip on the other side because I needed it for these trousers. Um, they're basically like a big jodper and they have top stitching all down the outside. And then when the leg is, um, it has like a join here. There's a patch on the inside leg stand up so they're like this so they do look a bit funny but it's obviously it's a costume now all that needs so they're all done except for the eyelets so on this leg piece here they need to have eyelets because they're laced up and in, and I did have problems with the eyelet function on my machine I have given up on my machine and trying to do the eyelet so I'm gonna stitch them by hand but I'm gonna use something as a template to then stitch around or stitch over to get that effect of the eyelets which I hand sew which will make them a bit easier to get them into a full circle. I am waiting on a delivery on something just to help a little gadget just to help me get the circle right on them and then they're done. So they are overlocked at the bottom which seems strange but apparently that's how they need to be done now and that is overlocked in the same cotton as what I've used throughout the garment so I then had to fill four bobbins and put the bobbins on my overlocker rather than use cones because I needed the gut gutterman thread and obviously I didn't have four big reels of gutterman thread so I used the bobbins for that and it got there I mean it was a bit of a hassle but I just want to get these eyelets done and then the trousers done my husband can sub submit the photos and hopefully if they pass approval he can then wear them if he goes to the comic con in I think it's the end of October actually in London so I said to him I just want to get them done and I don't want to be doing it like two days before the event I've just as I was talking to you about trousers I have just remembered I was making some trousers they were a birder pattern and I'll just put them on and show you where I'm at with those. Now I was making some birder trousers and I can't remember the pattern so I will look it up and I'll put it on the screen here. It was from their petite range 
and I have some cotton which I bought as trousers fabric I have literally just put these on over my tights because I have my tights on so they are a bit snug and I haven't fully done them up so I'm just holding them together now but they are I mean I overfitted them I think because the trouble is this fabric does not have any stretch to it at all so they are really tight on my thighs I was so concerned with having all excess fabric here that I sort of fitted them and fitted them thought okay I don't have that extra fabric now and I thought they were quite um, you know quite well fitted here with the darts at the back I thought oh yeah they're too you know they're quite slimming they were quite good and then I came to like walk in them I'm like that is skin tight so whether I make them in a a fabric which has some kind of stretch to it and they'd probably be okay then or I just opt to go for trousers which are like a wide leg or like loose fitting or maybe a bit of elastic at the back my weight does fluctuate quite a bit and so I find if I'm making something really fitted to me if I put on a couple of pounds that's really tight and nobody wants that or I worry that I've overfitted it and then like with the skirt then I make it too big and then it's just falling down all the time so I think if I make this pattern I could probably you make it with the alterations that I've done with this but it needs to have stretch in it. I think if it had stretch in it it's probably hard to see because it's dark and these are a navy trouser um, I'll just pan down I don't know if you can see really see all those trousers or not excuse the cat who likes to keep me company sometimes um, so they are a tapered leg but they're just they're, they're really if we're going to walk in them I don't know if you can see it in, on there they're just like super tight and then also I've added length to um, even out the front and the back to cover like my tummy and then because they're high waisted but there's no zip because it's supposed to be a side zip they think they look a bit strange there's too much like crotch depth there um without a zip so i think pan up rather than you talk to my crotch i think that if i make them if i make high-waisted trousers i think they do need to have a center front and obviously i have a center front zip and obviously I have made a centre front zip on my husband's cosplay trousers so there's nothing really stopping me and that was fairly straightforward to just take my time and then get the zip in but I think either these in a stretch or some kind, not too stretchy but obviously a fabric with some stretch or a elastic at the back or something it's all gone a bit Pete Tong, that's gone a bit wrong but I thought I'd just let you know so I'm not going to finish these trousers off because there's no point they just they're not going to fit right they're going to be uncomfortable if I'm going to sit in them I'm not going to be able to breathe um but that is where I'm at with trousers so I may be leaving the fitted trousers for now but I might go with something a bit looser I'm going to have to be careful just to keep my hand up here otherwise I'm going to be flashing everybody and not realize thank you for watching I hope you've subscribed if you haven't please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you again in my next video